Yeah, <laughs> nice. That has got a great feel to it for sure. So give us a little bit more of a rundown or breakdown of the chords and kind of how you're walking through those. Okay, I want to point out that there was one brand new chord and it's a it's a it's a surefire ending chord to any song and that's a six nine. So I played it with my second finger on the third fret of the sixth string and I'm blocking off the A string again. Then it's second fret, second fret, bar two frets with the first finger and third fret, third fret, two frets, uh, no, sorry, individual strings is how I play it. Some people would bar that, but I don't tend to bar that. So that's only one place to play that song, that chord, but it's a great ending chord. Like, no matter what happens during the song, if you hit this chord at the end, it sounds great. <laughs> okay, so let's walk through that. First was the original, which you've heard. Now you're going to have this all memorized. E60 sharp a minute, A minor 79. Diminished a minor seven, B nine, G six. Second time through, G six to G seven, C nine, and alternating the bass. G six, our progression number one, A minor seven, B nine, G six, G seven, C nine, and alternate the bass. G6 Okay, progression number two here In C Two backwards perfect ending chord <laughs> you know i learned that chord if you don't mind sure some extemporaneous talk as if nothing this is you know well it's all pretty extemporaneous which is <laughs> right. great um i played with patsy montana for 12 years and she was the first woman to sell a million records in country music now uh -huh. she's not in the record books riaa gold records she never got that because that started two years after she sold a million records and the records were then 78s. They were sold door to door or in furniture stores where people could buy their record player. And I got to meet her when I was about 19 or 20 years old. I was playing in an old time string band and we were hired to back her up. And I loved her music. And we drove from Michigan to California to play this one festival. And we listened to her records all the way across. She was backed up by an amazing cowboy band called, um, Son no, it wasn't Sons of the Pioneers. Darn it. They were fantastic. So, but they were all over the place. You know, they didn't get in each other's way. There was a uh, mandolin and fiddles and guitars and cool lines. It was more like Dixieland approach to Western swing music. And it's, it's, it, there was counterpoint involved. And so we listened all the way across the country, uh, and then we met her. And I just said, oh my gosh, I can't believe I get to play with you. And she just looked at me and smiled. She was little. She came up to about here on me standing up, and I'm 5'5", five five, so she was tiny. And uh, she looked up and said, yeah, I bet you thought I was dead. Because <laughs> she sold a million records in like 1934, you know. And... Uh, Oh, it was crazy. such a thrill to play with her, but she gave me some records to listen to. And um, one had Grady Martin playing guitar, uh, uh -huh. Marty Robbins' Gunfighter Ballads, not so politically correct lyrics for today, but the chords are great, the runs are great. And, um, and every song ended with the six chord. <laughs> so uh, it, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a great ending chord, all-purpose ending chord. 